Okay, everyone. Can see some of you had more than ten, and the list goes on. Okay, well that's fun. That's it's good to it's interesting, eh? You know, say what are the keys that are essential for our physical, psychological, and emotional well-being? So a lot of research has gone into that, and let's just see what the researchers come up with. So, altruism. Generosity. It's right up there. Are those embarrassing, embarrassed giggles? <laughs> so generosity is what feeds our soul. And the more we give, the more our, our soul and our vital force is enlivened. What you're going to see underlies all of these and is the most important, we're going to talk about a little bit, is awe. A moment of awe is actually inspires all of the other keys and is at the root of the other keys. So the more moments of awe you have, the more you naturally gravitate to the other keys that naturally make you healthier. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Compassion. Diversity, the acceptance uh, I, I unconditionally of other people without judgment. Empathy, the feeling of others' pain. Forgiveness, letting go of blame and victimization. Gratitude, paying attention to the positive things in life and the positive things in others. And happiness, mindfulness, and social connection. Okay, so those are the ten top. <laughs> interesting, huh? So interesting. So it's a very important list here as, as, as practitioners that we should really understand what feeds our body is what feeds our soul. And what feeds our soul is compassion, generosity, all of those divine attributes that we allow to move us and move through us. But most especially is, is awe. Now, happiness. So... Just a moment on happiness and to clarify happiness. Uh, we all know that happiness and good health goes together, right? And happier people experience less depression, that we know for sure, and less stress, stronger immune systems, lower heart rates, and longer lives. Great. Okay. But are all forms of happiness equally good for your health? Uh, what do you think? Okay, so let's look at what what different forms there are, first of all, okay? So, because I'm looking at the time and thinking we're going to have to eat, otherwise we'll all be unhappy. But <laughs> your body can tell the difference between udenomic well-being, the kind that arises from um, service, you know, and, and, and so that when we say purpose is when our soul is moved by something, you know, by, you know, so acts of generosity, acts of giving, acts of compassion, okay, uh, versus those that are hedonic, having a good time. So our body can tell the difference. So the results of a study show that while both types of happiness correlate with lower depression, only those people with high levels of the ude, udemonic happiness, in other words, the happiness that comes from giving, the happiness that comes from generosity, from awe, uh, had a low CTRA, or a better immune response profile. So this is um, research that was done at UCLA School of Medicine. And for example, in one study, they, lo they assessed ADL adults uh, and assessed them during uh, happiness that came from giving or sharing or whatever, and happiness that came after a good time or a party or celebrating with people. And they looked at their, at their bloods, they looked at their, their, their signs, and they looked for patterns, what they called conserved transcrip transcriptional response to adversity, or CTRA. So this is patterns now that they're looking for. And they found that um, a, a pattern of high expression of genes involved in inflammation 
and low expression of antibody and antiviral genes is one, and, and what we would expect from someone who's under chronic stress or trauma or threat is associated with an increased risk of heart cardiovascular disease. So the people who do hedonic, you know, go out for a good time and da da da, have actually a a higher level of CRT, in other words, TTR8. In other words, they're much less healthy. So your body knows the difference. And uh, so the happiness derived from leading a life of purpose in the sense of purposeful stuff that comes from the soul, that comes from uh, being moved by our spiritual impulses and meaning, uh, have a much better protection of health on a cellular level. Whereas happiness from pleasure doesn't have the same effect. So having a good time is fine, but it's not as healthy for you as <laughs> the other kinds of happiness. <laughs> so um, acting in generous ways light, lights up different parts of the brain and can lead to positive health outcomes and lower stress and better cardiovascular health. So that's just a summary of a whole bunch of, of research that's been done on that. In addition, several studies have found that volunteers uh, have longer lives in older adults so I, I remember a 92-year-old man uh, whose favorite thing was, dry, you know, the we, uh, meals on wheels? He would drive around delivering meals to old people <laughs> at 93. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> okay, so awe. That is, so what the research has shown is Awe underlines everything, awe being moved by our soul, right? Which is what we talked about this morning, right? That whole process of light coming in, that's what we're talking about. Is awe important? What role does it play in our lives? Even if we were just to look at the average person, okay? Um, there's, I was reading about an economist who is saying that uh, 5 million people visit the Grand Canyon, 4 million people Yosemite Park every year. Um, just the cost of the fireworks displays in all the cities around the world is phenomenal. The Cirque du Soleil brings in over 850 million per year. And the Hubble telescope, which brings us those pretty pictures, cost over $10 billion. So an economist <laughs> was writing and saying that this is an appalling waste of resources. Uh, you know, but why are fireworks, circuses, image of distant stars so important to us? Because they move us. You know, that's why we go to the Grand Canyon. So they don't offer neither either material or social reward, and yet they offer something intangible and immaterial that seems to feed us very deeply and move us to want to engage in that kind of activity. So. What this research has shown is that awe, when we are moved by something, is at the root of all others, that it feeds every single one of the other keys. Awe on its own balances cytokines in the body. So the unnecessary level of cytokines that are related to autoimmune disease and depression, there's over uh, the, the research, and just one example is one that involved over 200 adults. Uh, and those who experienced awe, amazement, and wonder had the lowest levels of cytokine, interleukin-6, another marker of inflammation. And the studies show that awe is the only emotion that can actually balance those cytokines. So Steiner's was on to something, wasn't he, when he said that when we allow ourselves to be moved by the soul, it brings light and life to all parts of our body. So... Cytokines are necessary for, to fight infection, but too much of them leads to diabetes, heart attacks, uh, arthritis, Alzheimer's, and clinical depression. So, you know, they can bl also block key hormones such as neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, so that control our mood and our appetite, our sleep, and our memory. So, you know, and these high levels are, you know, directly related to high mortality. So there we are. A few moments of awe is all you need. Because awe calms our defense mechanisms. It's felt by the autonomic nervous system, which controls both our fight and flight reactions. 
they found that people who experience moments of awe or allow themselves, because it's just, you just have to walk outside for two seconds, look at the snow reflected off, the sunlight reflecting off the snow or the full moon or the stars at night, you know, it only takes a second. But just that second is enough to inspire our social connectedness. So Darwin spoke of awe as the universal patterns of behavior which play an important factor in creating human social connectedness. And special genes have evolved that allow us to experience awe as human beings. And this is a very important function in, in evolution. Awe, people who allow themselves to experience awe, also have improved brain functioning including scientific reasoning, okay? So even the logical mind gets fed by awe, okay? So awe changes, transforms our sense of self and brings consciousness to a higher level of us instead of the me. So awe is the experience of the creative force of the universe. It's the direct experience of the divine, and that's what we were talking about all morning. So allowing ourselves to experience moments of awe is allowing ourselves to discover the innate meaning of life oh. and then to allow ourselves to be moved by that innate meaning. And we don't have to go for meaning. We don't have to go for purpose. It's there and the best, the best form is the one that moves us. So awe is the ultimate numi dynamic medicine. So as a practitioner, if you're going to give advice about anything, <laughs> tell them to go to the cirque <laughs> or go watch the moon or go outside and see if that they can find in the burgeoning flower. Okay, so that's what the science of awe is, a new burgeoning science where all of this research is coming out and re revealing that the true meaning of human life is this incredible gift that has been bestowed to us that we can experience awe and that we have the genes and the, the bodies that can do that. So it's, it's important to know that we cannot be in awe all the time because by definition awe is a moment. Yeah. So we can't be always moved by our soul. But you remember this chart? Okay, and we said that health is going up and down that red arrow, isn't it? Okay, that true health is being the mover, but then periodically remembering <laughs> to allow yourself to be moved. And it's in that dipping below into the allowing yourself to be moved into those moments of awe that bring in living light, okay, that bring in the life force that makes us healthy and strong and ability to appreciate life in all of its aspects. So life is meant to go back and forth on that line, but we have to remember how important awe is to nourish every single part of us. So hopefully you have an awesome holiday time. <laughs>